In a best of five, the complexion of the whole thing changes so much based on a single game. This ball is gone. Some damage has been done. Whacked into right center field. Gonzalez being waved home. Another little bloop, and the Guardians have the lead. Now you've made it a series. We never thought this was going to be easy. We're excited to go back home to our fans. Sellout crowd of 34,000 plus at Progressive Field roaring in anticipation of the first pitch of Game 3 of this American League Division Series between the New York Yankees and the Cleveland Guardians. Yesterday with their second extra inning win of this postseason, the Guardians got out of the Bronx with a split and now this best of five series comes down to a best two out of three with games three and four scheduled right here in Cleveland. With Ron Darling, I'm Bob Costas. Welcome to Game 3. First item of business, Aaron Judge, 0 for 8 in this series out of the leadoff spot. Seven strikeouts and a walk. Did not have a single at-bat in the first two games with anyone on base. He has been moved to the number two spot in the order. Glaber Torres will lead off tonight for the Yankees, and we'll talk more about that as the evening progresses. Now to the starting pitchers. The slender slinger goes <laughs> for the Cleveland Guardians. Tristan McKenzie, 6'5 and 165, but he can bring it. Well, both these young pitchers are in a great spot. Homegrown 2015 draft. It hasn't been a straight line for McKenzie, but this year by far his most productive year. On July 3rd, he pitched against the Yankees through seven scoreless innings, only allowed one hit. 18 starts after that start against the Yankees, and the ERA just a little over two. And that carried over into his first postseason start, game two of the wild card series against the Rays, six scoreless innings. He'll be opposed tonight by Luis Severino, an all star in 2017 and 2018. And then a series of injuries really limited him for the next three seasons. Tommy John's surgery was part of that. This year he was off to a good start, but then a lat strain landed him on the injured list for quite some time. Well, when you think of Luis Severino, you think about a guy who finished third in the Cy Young in 2017. Now he's been on that injured list with a lot of ailments and in fact only made 19 starts this year but the Yankees were 13 and 6. His last start seven no hit innings against the Texas Rangers. He's healthy fit and ready for this start. As you may have heard the Cleveland Guardians are the youngest team in baseball and entering this postseason they had a combined total of 42 playoff games in their entire roster and 25 of those belong to Jose Ramirez. Here's Lauren Shahadi now on how this young team has responded to their 63 year old Hall of Fame bound skipper Lauren. Oh, well, Bob, I was sitting beside the dugout yesterday and I heard them say, why not us? They're used to people counting them out. Some projections gave them a 7% chance of winning the AL Central. And they've passed every test and they've used it as fuel. Remember, they're 22, 23, 24 years old. Youngest team in the major. Sarah Francona was managing before Oscar Gonzalez was even born and they rely on Tito heavily. Tristan McKenzie told me he's effectively managed across generations. We're going to tell our kids Terry Francona was our manager and they're hoping the future Hall of Famer takes them to the promised land. Series is tied up. The crowd is ready. So are we. Game three of the ALDS from Cleveland, Ohio is next. First pitch after this. There's used, there's sort of 54 degrees. It's been known to be a whole lot more difficult to deal with at this time of the year. Winds at 13 miles an hour and gusting up to 20, they say, but the winds seem fairly calm right now. Here's a look at the Yankee lineup. As we told you, it's topped now by Glaber Torres. They're without DJ LeMayhew and Andrew Benintendi both of whom are better suited to a leadoff spot if they want to hit Judge further down in the lineup, which is part of the reason why Judge had been hitting leadoff in the latter stages of the regular season. Also, part of the reason was that they were trying to give him as many at-bats as possible as he chased Babe Ruth and Roger Maris, but now he's down to the number two spot, still looking for his first base hit of this series. Well, McKenzie representing one of the young guardians, only 25 years old, and if you look at his numbers, much better in the last 17 starts that does not include the postseason start against Tampa Bay when he threw six scoreless. 
and defensively behind Tristan McKenzie. You can see in the infield, they really have four middle infielders on the infield with Gabriel Arias at first base. Austin Hedges has caught all three games uh, in the series. And Stephen Kwan, Mike Miles Straw, and Oscar Gonzalez in the outfield. Josh Naylor, who normally starts at first base, is the DH tonight. He's been hobbling. And we'll tell you more about that as we proceed. Dan Ayasonia, who is the crew chief, is the plate umpire. Will Little has first. Alan Porter second. Mark Rippinger third base. Right field line, Jeremy Rehack, who had the plate yesterday at Yankee Stadium. And Jordan Baker has the calls down the left field line. Tristan McKenzie, born in Brooklyn, grew up in Palm Beach, Florida. 6-5 and 165, and the 165 might be an exaggeration. Torres on the first pitch, rolls it to the shortstop Rosario, who throws him out. Well, imagine when you made the lineup out, you wanted a hitter other than Judge to maybe take a few pitches, yeah. see what McKenzie has. First pitch swinging by Gleyber Torres, 6-3. to three. Hard to believe that Aaron Judge actually heard a smattering of boos at Yankee Stadium yesterday as his slump continued. You would think that 62 home runs and the way he carried himself throughout the entire season would buy him at least a grace period of some sort. And for the most part, it did. And as you see, there are some Yankee fans here tonight at Progressive Field. He was booed <laughs> lustily by the crowd here, as was every Yankee, including Aaron Boone, who played two seasons here a generation ago as a third baseman for the then Cleveland Indians. McKenzie you will see good fastball straight over the top 12 to 6 curveball and a slider. A ball and a strike to judge. One and two. Slider at 88. McKenzie likes to go right back to work, but Judge stepped out. In response to the small amount of booing he heard in the Bronx, and he's hearing it in response to his every move here tonight in Cleveland, Judge typically said, look, I just have to play better. That's my answer. Got to play better. Two and two. Well, in his defense, he has not seen a lot of pitches in the middle of the plate. In fact, hasn't seen any pitches in the middle of the plate. But McKenzie threw him a pitch early on in this count. The third pitch, a slider over the heart of the plate. The 2-2 runs the count out full. In nine playoff games prior to this one against Cleveland over the course of his career, Aaron Judge is two for 37. One of the two hits was a home run. That's 0-54. 27 strikeouts in those 37 at bats. And he strikes out here. The eighth time in nine at bats he's fanned in this series. Probably saw a lot of this in game two from Shane Bieber. A lot of breaking pitches. And Tristan McKenzie spins it just as good. Got a good curveball. This is his slider on, on the outside part. Seems like a hittable pitch. But it looked like Judge was out in front. Anthony Rizzo, in contrast to Judge, has a good personal history against Cleveland in October. World Series in 2016 for the Cubs. First two games of this series. 344 with a couple of home runs, including one in game one of this series off Cal Quantrill. Lots of good memories in this ballpark for Anthony Rizzo. Home run in game six of the World Series in 2016. Reached base three times in the deciding game seven. And was on the receiving end of the throw from Chris Bryant for the last out. As they won the World Series and ended for the Cubs a 108 game, 108 year. They only wish it was 108 <laughs> games. A 108 year quest. Three and oh. It's 
courtesy of Rizzo here early in the game. Takes a whack at a 3 0 pitch. John Carlos Stanton is on deck. Ha! Taken for a strike. Tall and slender. The shift is on straight over the top from McKenzie. And he draws a two out walk. You see the Yankee hitters stepping out. McKenzie wants to get it and go. They're trying to disrupt his rhythm a little bit. Well, he suffered and had to go to the minor leagues a couple of times in 2021 because of walking people. And he's really hammered that out by working a little quicker. And that has gotten rid of a lot of those walks. John Carlos Stanton. Had a two run homer in the first inning of Shane Bieber yesterday at Yankee Stadium. That ended the Yankee scoring. Somewhat under the radar, Stanton has homered in nine of his last 12 postseason games. Passed him upstairs. Terry Francona was saying that McKenzie at times in the first inning it takes him a while to get into the game starts a little slow with especially with the velocity on his fastball. Two and one to Stanton. Yeah, Francona said that the pitching coach, Carl Willis, has had to say to him, What are you waiting for? It's almost like he's had to set an alarm clock for yeah. McKenzie. Bring your best stuff right now, especially in the playoffs, which he did against the Rays a week ago. Well, after walking Rizzo, he now falls behind Stanton 3 and 1. Count. It was a strange take there from Stanton, right? 3 1 count, got the fastball he wanted, couldn't pull the trigger. Rizzo will be running. He takes off, and the 3 2 pitch is fouled back. Stanton pulled the trigger that time. He was on that fastball from McKenzie. Through all those fastballs in a row, you might be able to see a slider here to Stanton, just like he used against Aaron Judge. High fly ball, right center field. Gonzalez calls. And that finishes the Yankees in the first. Up come the Guardians. No score after half an inning. Here we go. General formula for Terry Francona's Guardians as they came on strong in the last several weeks of the season has been contact, hustle, throw in the stolen base here and there, a little bit of offense to support their very strong starting pitching and even stronger bullpen. Stephen Kwan, the left fielder, starts it against Luis Severino. He opened game two with a bunt hit, shows bunt here, and takes a ball. He's three for nine in the series with a home run off Garrett Cole in the opener. A pop into foul territory, Donaldson chasing it, but it's out of play. Severino coming off those seven no hit innings in Texas, his catcher that night was Kyle Higashioka see his numbers from the season only 19 starts the Yankees were 13 and 6 in those starts 7 and 3 and 107 regular season starts for the Yankees 50 wins Higashioka was going to catch at least some games in the postseason makes sense 
for him to reunite with Severino with the comfort factor after that excellent outing against the Rangers at the end of the regular season. And in truth, although Trevino has been sensational as a receiver for them, leading the American League in every significant defensive metric, Higashioka has hit better down the stretch this season. 18 for his last 49, a 367 clip with the three home runs. Higashioka's got some power. Severino's 1 2 pitch to Quan evens the count. Severino averaged almost 98 miles per hour on his fastball in that start in Texas. And he hit 98 with that last one. Line drive foul. Severino's postseason record is just one and three. ERA 5.17 and eight career playoff starts. His lone win, though, was against Cleveland in game four of the 2017 ALDS at Yankee Stadium. Yanks won the game 7 to 3. The 2 2. Full count. Think back to that 2017 ALDS. The then Indians were coming off a World Series appearance. They had a 22 game winning streak toward the end of that season. They were up 2 0 in the division series. Joe Girardi's Yanks won the last three games and moved on to the LCS. Juan, that is a fair ball down the right field line. He can really scoop. Judge digs it out of the corner, and it's a leadoff double. Well, no nerves for Quan in his first postseason now. It's four for ten, home run, double, bunt base hit, and here he gets the rally starting. Started with his double down the line. Nice play by Judge. To get to it and get it in, Quan has such great speed. With all of his home run exploits, casual fans may not understand what a good outfielder Aaron Judge is with an especially good arm. Ahmed Rosario, big home run in game two yesterday, fouls it back. Terry Francona was telling us today, Bob, that he loves Rosario and his ability to hit the ball the other way. This would be a great time to do it. His homer went into the bullpen in right center yesterday. Had him out in front, 0 and 2. Jose Ramirez, the Guardians' most productive hitter, waits on deck. And the one two pitch got a piece of it. Boy that was a 99 mile an hour fastball shoulder high that Rosario was able to foul off. Well it was completely futile until yesterday when those two hits did come in timely fashion. Struck him out. Well, Severino has shown after coming off the injured list that he is healthy. He is throwing hard. He is snapping that breaking ball off. And he's back to being that dominant pitcher he was five seasons ago. So with Quan at second with one out. Here's Ramirez five for 16 with three home runs in his career against Severino. <laughs> Throw in behind but <laughs> Kiner Falefa was nowhere near the bag. 
Yeah, the 40 foot throw became a 50 foot throw. Off his fist, but it's going to drop in front of Judge. Juan may be held at third, and he is. Runners at the corners with one out. Well, they haven't all been hard, hit hard, but he always seems to get his hits, does Ramirez. This ball up on the label of the bat, but still strong enough to have a one hopper to judge. Good stop there by Sarbaugh. No chance for Quan to score. Now Josh Naylor, the DH. If you were watching game two, in the course of beating out an infield hit, he came up hobbling. He had a compound fracture in the lower part of his right leg a year ago. Multiple surgeries, has a rod in that leg. He's playing through clenched teeth and generally gritting it out. But it was best to DH him tonight and maybe tomorrow because Francona has concerns about his lateral movement around first base. Big spot here in the first. Well, he had a couple of options. He could have played Owen Miller and kept Naylor on the bench for later. But he really wanted his bat in there against Severino. Now, if Naylor, who doesn't run all that well to begin with, and less so now, if he hits the ball on the ground, he's a double play candidate. Ramirez stole 20 bases this year. He's not going anywhere, and Naylor takes down and in. Remember, Naylor's coming off in his last at bat at Yankee Stadium, a bullet double over the head of Harrison Bader in center field, who is shading him to left center. The ball yesterday was hit to right center. The 1 1 pitch. It gets by Kiner Falefa, and the Guardians are on the board. Had he fielded it, a double play was possible. Instead, 1 0 Cleveland. But it almost looked like Connor Falefa was confused by that ball off the bat. He didn't know whether to play it on a hop or come up and catch it on the fly. Yes. Ball jams Naylor just a bit, so the ball comes off like a changeup. So he didn't know whether to go back and play it on a hop or come in and catch it on the fly. He didn't either. He may not be 100%, but he's been a contributor, speaking of Naylor. Four hitters, three hits, a double and a pair of singles. Now Oscar Gonzalez. Inside with a fastball. Gonzalez, as you see by those numbers, had a good rookie season. And he's had a couple of huge extra inning hits for the Guardians in this postseason. 15th inning homer in this ballpark off Corey Kluber, former Cleveland Indian, to win it 1 0 and send the Rays home and send the Guardians on to the division series. And then a blue pit in the 10th inning. It was part of a two run rally that put the Yankees away in game two and even this series. He went around, wasn't his intention, but Will Little at first says he did. Two balls up and in, one for a strike, this one running up and in, but Gonzalez could not stop his swing. Helmet and the bat went around. And the one two pitch, breaking ball down and away. No, he didn't go. Mm. 
Last check was easy. This one, good job by Gonzalez. That just is a strong man to be able to hold that check swing. Strong young man. After two off days between games one and two, one scheduled, the other caused by weather. Now four days of consecutive games. Fouled away. Heavy bullpen usage by both teams in the extra inning game yesterday. And Severino's pitch count is already up over 20 in the first inning. In the air to right, it sends Judge back onto the warning track near the wall, makes the catch. Ramirez tags. He goes to third. And Naylor somehow makes it to second. Boy, talk about heart. You're not always expected to tag and go from first to second. Well, that was a clinic. That's what these Guardians do. They take the extra base. First to throw from Judge, who had to go a long way to get that ball. He was playing in right center. Perfect throw to second base, and Naylor just got in. Naylor was tagging right from the start, and Ramirez was off the base about halfway, went back to tag, and made it the third. Ramirez advancing was a given. Naylor advancing was really impressive, all things considered. Here's a swing from Gonzalez. You see how far Judge has to go. Watch Ramirez. Off the base, goes back and tag. But Naylor was tagging from the start. Once he read that Ramirez was going, he took the extra base as well. Boone came out briefly. The batter now is Jimenez. American League starting second baseman in the All-Star game this year after hitting 297 with those 17 home runs. Strike one. Well, the Guardians had been 0 for 14 until Jimenez's hit yesterday to drive in a run. This is one of those outs as a starting pitcher that you have mm -hmm. to have. If you're going to have a big ball game, go deep into the game, these are the two out hitters that you have to get out first base open rookie Gabriel Arias is on deck Arias has exactly 47 at bats in the major leagues during which he hit 191 and upcoming will be his first playoff at bat so Severino maybe should be a bit careful here with a much more dangerous hitter that's up high two and one Well, this is where you'd think discretion is the better part of valor. 2 1 count. Hitter's got the count in his favor. You might see a changeup or slider here from Severino. Mm. It's a fastball, and again, it's high. Couple of concerns for Aaron Boone. Base hit here. Would put him in a 3 0 hole. Meanwhile, Severino about to deliver his 27th pitch mm. in the first inning. Breaking ball in there. Threw him the slider on 3 and 1 to run the count out full. Ramirez at third and Naylor at second. Severino peering in to Ugashioka. And his 3 2 pitch. Foul back. Mm. And another 3-2 pitch. 
in the air down the left field line well into the seats. I mean this is what the Guardians do. Quan starts out with a big base hit double down the line a couple of softer hits some really good base running deep count here by Jimenez in this at bat against Severino. He's thrown 30 pitches and he'll throw at least one more. Last outing of the regular season seven no hit innings 94 pitches about a third of that already and he's not out of the first. Struck him out. Second strike out of the inning. The Guardians score one. They get three hits but they leave two. Could have been worse as far as Severino is concerned. After one one nothing Cleveland. Welcome back to Progressive Field. Tristan McKenzie on the mound. We've talked about the challenges he presents. What about the fact that when he releases the ball, he's much closer than 60 feet, 6 inches. Check out the wingspan. This is him in an 80-inch door. Now, keep in mind, the average NBA player's wingspan is 82 inches. And thanks to the strength and conditioning coaches who just told me, Tristan's is 78 and 3 quarters. So when he releases the ball, he's basically on you. Ron, you watch Jacob deGrom a lot. Similar situation, right? Yes. Josh Donaldson fouls one away as we move to the second. Go ahead, Ron. Yeah, you know what's interesting, uh, Lauren, about having a wingspan like that, throwing straight over the top, is that you're releasing the ball closer to the plate. It's called effective velocity. So even when you see 93, 94, it's playing more like 96, 97 when it comes out of the hand of McKenzie. His 0-1 to Donaldson. All down. See his arsenal, the fastball, of course, four seams straight over the top. He really have two distinct breaking balls in the slider and curveball. That's not easy to do for most pitchers. Gets ahead of him with a slider, one and two. Donaldson, the 2015 American League MVP, big year then with the Blue Jays. Strikes out here to start the Yankee second. Second strikeout for McKenzie. You know, Bob, both these pitchers, if they can get in pitchers counts, they have the arsenal to pick up a lot of strikeouts. And good breaking ball slider there from McKenzie. Severino has the same. It brings up Kiner Falefa. Yankee shortstop takes a strike. He's three for seven in this series with a walk thrown in. He grew up in Hawaii and says that as a freshman in high school he was 5 2 and 120 and all of his coaches told him you can't play baseball can't even make the high school team. Here he is in the big leagues. Pop wide of first. Three Guardians converge. Who's going to take it? It's Gonzalez from right field. Boy, that was a nice play by the defense. Everyone wanted it here, but Gonzalez calls everybody off. Menez gets out of the way. And the youngster, Arias, gets out of the way as well. Two quick outs, nobody on. Here's Bader. One for seven in this series. The one hit was a homer in game one at Yankee Stadium. Big home run, tied that ball game at one. Yankees would go on to win four to one.
Strike one to Bader. Pretty clear that the Yankees are trying to disrupt McKenzie by stepping out constantly. Next year, that will be more difficult to do. The pitch clock will affect hitters as well as pitchers. It isn't just that the pitchers will have to deliver once the batter is in the box. The batter will have to be in the box within an allotted time to begin with. 0 and 2. And that, well, could have been the end of the inning. But Hedges couldn't hold on, so the Bader at bat continues. Looking at the glove, Hedges with a juggling act on this good slider from McKenzie and couldn't hold on. Yep. Twice with the glove, once with the bare hand, couldn't come up with it. Chop to third, Ramirez backs up, fires across the diamond, and that finishes the Yankees of the second. After one and a half, one nothing Cleveland. Looking for more stats? Just ask Siri. Who leads the MLB postseason in home runs? Bottom of the second inning, bottom of the order for the Guardians. Arias, Hedges, and Straw. This is the first season that the erstwhile Cleveland Indians have been known as the Cleveland Guardians. Obviously, there were sensitivities for many years surrounding that moniker and also some of the logos, Chief Wahoo and whatnot. So why Guardians, you may ask? It traces to the Guardians of Traffic, the 43-foot-tall Art Deco statues that flank the Hope Memorial Bridge, which is close by Progressive Field. The Hope Memorial Bridge used to be known as the Lorraine Carnegie Bridge, but was renamed the Hope Memorial in honor of favorite son Bob Hope, who was born in England but grew up in Cleveland and for many years owned a piece of the Cleveland ha! Indians. So that's the Hope Memorial Bridge with the guardians of traffic flanking the bridge. And there were many nominations for a name, yes. over a thousand of them. And they decided that it would be guardians. So there's your explanation. Very good. And looking pretty good in their first year. You know, when Bob Hope owned part of the Cleveland franchise, his buddy Bing Crosby owned part of the Pittsburgh Pirates at the same time. Although during that stretch, the Indians and Pirates never met in the World Series. The 2-2 pitch now to Arias. Normally a shortstop, and Francona tells us a good one, and a good enough athlete to play just about anywhere on the infield. He started one game at first base this year in late September. And he's at first tonight. His first ever postseason at bat. And he lines it into left field for a base hit. Maybe extra bases. Cabrera will chase it to the wall. Auspicious beginning in the playoffs for Arias. A leadoff double. And the Guardians are getting their swings against Severino. Well, Severino did not want to walk Aria, so decided to go with the 3-2 slider and was just throwing it for a strike. It did not fool Arias. Put it on the nose over the head of Donaldson to the wall. Lots of full counts, deep counts against Severino early for these Guardians offense. Look at Anthony Rizzo creeping in at first base, almost daring Hedges to bunt. This is like your old teammate Keith Hernandez, That's right? A, well, Aaron Boone, yes, it was like Keith. Aaron Boone said when he played third base, he used to do the same thing to try to take away the bunt. He likes when Rizzo does this. Especially effective with the runner at first base, not the case here, with a left-handed throwing first baseman like Hernandez or Rizzo. Almost impossible to get one down and have them, if they field it cleanly, not get the force at second base. Well, the key here, if you're going to bunt it, is that you have to make sure Donaldson fields it. Yep. 
Well, he fouls it back. Do you see where Rizzo ended up? So even if he does not get bunted hard enough to get it to Donaldson, but still bunts it on the left-hand side, Rizzo will make the play on the run to third base. Now watch him break here. He's going to break all the way to the third base line. He's reading the angle of the bat. Now remember, youngster Arias, you do not have to run from second. Mm -hmm. If it's bunted back to Rizzo, hold second base. He swings away, hits it softly into center field. In comes Bader, can't make the catch. Arias is held at third. First and third, nobody out. Fifth hit in an inning plus for the Guardians, plus a long fly ball to the wall and right that advanced two base runners. Unlikely offense from Austin Hedges. Two walks yesterday, could not get the bunt down off the end of the bat and drops it in front of Harrison Bader. And the Guardians got something cooking again. <laughs> Arias at third, Hedges at first. Straw to the plate. They'll concede the run if they can get the double play. Donaldson in close at third. Middle of the infield back. Ball one. Well, there's 29 offenses in baseball that are looking for a big inning here. Only the Guardians, I feel like the safety squeeze could be in play because that's how they play. Straw hit just 221. Didn't have a homer. Was in the lineup almost every day. In fact, that was one of the things about the Guardians this year. Their most productive players, Ramirez, Rosario, Jimenez, Juan, Straw productive because he runs well and plays the outfield well. They played almost every day. They stayed away from injuries for the most part. The 1 1 pitch, a high pop. Judge coming in, the ball in foul ground. It's Torres who catches it from second base, and nobody's going anywhere. So back to the top of the order for Stephen Kwan, who began the game for Cleveland with a double. And then scored on a Josh Naylor single. They look for the double play, but Quan will be very hard to double up unless he hits the ball very sharply and right at somebody. This has been a slog for Severino, who's approaching 50 pitches. See, 84 pitches in the postseason. Swung and missed only once. He began his career this year and didn't swing and miss at the first 116 pitches he faced. Personifying the Guardians' high contact approach. Interesting that the Yankees, with Rizzo holding on Hedges, who doesn't have a lot of speed at first, opens up a lane for Quan between Rizzo and Torres. That's another base hit. And the Guardians take a 2-0 lead. Quan is 2 for 2 and 5 for 11 in the series. Severino has been trying to use that up and in fastball against the left-handed hitters, but against Quan with that short stroke He's able to dump it in front of Aaron Judge in right field. The youngster Aria scores the second run for the Guardians. Cleveland has six hits in 10 at bats against Severino. Six hits and so far only two runs. It could be worse. Rosario chased that one. Bullpen moving. That looks like Domingo Herman.
We assume he'll be back. Outside. A ball and a strike. Rosario struck out his first time. Herman generally a starter. Obviously a guy you'd call upon for long work here. And it's beginning to look that way. The over under at this point on Severino going even four or five kind of dubious. I'm surprised he has not varied his pitches. Everything has been hard out of his hand so far. Mostly fastballs some hard sliders hasn't changed any speeds at all on these Guardians hitters. Didn't miss by much. Two and two. So shaping up as another October disappointment for Luis Severino. Pop up. Out of play. Fifty two pitches here in the second inning an unheard of amount. Cole and Cortez their top two starters looking on glumly. And Rosario hangs in. Fouling the slider back. Severino hasn't had a good feel for that slider yet. Remember the base hit double by Arias was on a hanging slider. That one was hanging as well to Rosario. A drive to deep center field. Bader at the edge of the track makes the catch in right center. The lead runner advances first and third with two out. The hits haven't been hit that hard. The outs to the outfield have been hit hard. This one hit pretty good by Rosario up in the strike zone. Didn't get enough carry in this cool night at Progressive Field. This throw by Bader ends up, if Severino doesn't get to it, would have ended up in the dugout. Hedges ended up at third. Quan held first. Now Ramirez. Shift on against him. Torres in shallow right field. Ball one. Jose had a soft single his first time up. Four for nine with a pair of doubles in the series. Judge in right field. Has a beat on it, makes the catch in front of the wall. Well, in each of the first two innings, the Guardians had three hits. And in each of those innings, they managed just one run. From the Yankee perspective, could have been a whole lot worse. Later tonight on FS1, it's the Padres and the Dodgers. Padres leading that series two games to one after finishing 22 games behind the Dodgers in their division during the regular season. If a game five is necessary, meaning the Dodgers win tonight, they'll go back to Dodger Stadium. And that'll be tomorrow night also on FS1 at 9 Eastern time. Meanwhile, the Astros and the Mariners are in the 13th inning, still scoreless in Seattle. Even if the Mariners wind up being swept, when you consider what happened in game one, the Alvarez home run at the bottom of the ninth and the Mariners had a big lead, and this game, they have played one of the best teams in the game very, very tough. Yes, they have. 2 and 0 to Higashioka, starting it for the Yankees in the third. What an effort by George Kirby tonight for the Mariners. Seven scoreless innings against that Astros lineup. 
Higashioka hit 227, but 299 in the season's second half. Hard. And he had 10 home runs for the year. Tristan McKenzie's 3 1 pitch. Full count. Well, this is the battle here, right? The Guardians are going to nickel and dime you with their offense. The Yankees are going to get back in it by hitting home runs. McKenzie this year gave up 25 home runs in 191 and a third innings. Higashioka pops it back and out of play. Trying to think of the pitchers I've known when I played that had a body like McKenzie, Pascal Perez, I'm reminded. Mm. When I was a kid, Rogelio Moret for the Boston Red Sox. Oh, yeah. And after digging himself a 3 0 hole, McKenzie comes back to strike out Higashioka. McKenzie's done a better job after that first inning, being more aggressive in the second and here in the third. And getting the lead off out. Ron Guidry wasn't nearly as tall. Louisiana Lightning 5'11", but he was very slender. Satchel Page, who was part of the last Cleveland team to win the World Series in 1948. That ball is hit hard by Cabrera down the right field line. That's the first Yankee hit. He sprints for second, and he's got a one-out double. So the meal money wasn't quite what it became later in either the Negro Leagues or at that point in the major leagues. So Satchel Page wasn't packing on the pounds. A little breaking ball down and in for Cabrera. 0 for 8 in this series coming into this at bat with five strikeouts. So he gets off to a nice start and he knows that the lineup now will turn over. Now Torres in the leadoff spot with Judge back in the second position. Torres is far from the typical leadoff man. He hit 257, his on base percentage only 310. 39 walks against 129 strikeouts. Started three games in the leadoff spot this year, 10 in his career as a Yankee. Caught the hand of Austin Hedges. He keeps his hand by his side exposed. And Torres clipped that slider and it catches his hand. See, it's exposed there right on his thigh and he catches it right off the knuckles. Mm. Catchers are tough. Deserve combat pay. <laughs> and the 0 2 pitch. Fouled off. Okay, one more because it sets my okay. mind worrying. <laughs> I'm a sorry, guy, I brought it a, up. a guy you pitched against yeah. in the '86 World Series for the Boston Red Sox, Oil Can Boy. There you go. One of those guys whose uniforms just kind of hung off him, like Tristan. Another 0-2 to Glaber Torres. Whack to center field, really hit hard, but Straw goes back and makes the catch. Tagging is Cabrera. He dives in a third, but with two out. He blistered that ball, but Straw was able to make an easy play. Here's Judge, and let's take a look at the way the Guardians have worked him. Well, to give you a sense, I think what this really tells you is that the Guardians and Carl Willis, their pitching coach, has said, we're going to go after him with respect. But what they've done better than most teams, they've used the full arsenal. They haven't stayed just with one pitch to slider or haven't stayed with just high fastballs. They've used their whole arsenal and just have not thrown many in the middle of the plate. That'll make the seats. Now he's had a couple of hit in his first two at bats here. See this 11th plate appearance this postseason first one with a runner on base. 
in the first at bat he had a hanging slider he missed that time a fastball up that he fouled back both down the middle of the plate. Throwing the curveball, which he hasn't featured all that much. Missed with it down and away. Well, a lot of times, Bob, you'll come into these postseason starts and you'll feature your fastball more because it feels so good in your hand because you have that adrenaline just shooting through your body. The 1 1 to judge. Down. 2 and 1. Close pitch, but good call by Dan Iasonia behind the plate. Just misses down. Here's a drive to left center field and deep, and this ball is going to leave the yard. 62 in the regular season. His first one in the postseason. And just like that, it's a tie game. Well, it had to happen eventually. Big smile from Aaron Judge. And from the Yankee fans in attendance. He missed the first two that he had a chance to hit. He did not miss the third. Try to go up with that fastball, and it's middle, middle of the plate. And just a bomb off the bat of Judge. The chugging Guardians offense doing everything they can to score there, too. One swing of the bat by Judge, and the game's tied. It brings up Rizzo, who swings and misses. Kind of deflating, you would think, for the Guardians. Six hits in their first two turns at bat. Traffic all over the bases. Just one run in each of those innings. Each of them a three-hit inning. Each with one run produced and two men left on base. And in the blink of an eye, Cabrera a double. First Yankee hit. Judge a long home run. New game. And the key is Cabrera's hit because that gave Judge the first at bat in this series where he had someone on base, someone to drive in, drove himself in as well. The 1 1 to Rizzo is on the inside edge. Out of play, two and two. Check that. It holds at one and two. Roll to the right side. That finishes Rizzo and the Yankees in the third, but not before. A long blast off the bat of Aaron Judge gets him untracked and brings the Yankees back even. Ever wonder what players say on the field? Want to see celebrities try to hit a fastball? Interested in baseball culture in Latin America? Well, check out MLB Originals at MLB.com slash Originals. Aaron Judge, 62 during the regular season. Just about nada until his last swing of the postseason. And that was a no-doubter. Josh Naylor, who has been impressive in this series, not just in what is in the scorebook, but the heart he has shown mm. and the toughness. Had an RBI single in the first.
That's out of play. One and two. Well, if you're thinking about the uh, inspirational captain for this Cleveland team, for these young players, certainly is Jose Ramirez. But his two assistants, I think, are Naylor and Rosario. There is a whole ethos around this team of going 100 percent. Naylor goes down swinging. In between innings Aaron Boone talked with Lauren Shahadi here it is. Aaron 11 days off between starts for Seve has that affected him at all. I don't know I think stuff wise he's come out really good the fastball life's been there from Jump Street. Um, he's made some big pitches to limit damage right now it hasn't been perfect obviously. But we're right there. It's a brand new game. How have Aaron's at bats evolved over the series to you? Well, it evolved really nice, <laughs> right? Really there. well. Uh, you know, that's that one looked like a ball, golf ball going out of here. Matter of time with Aaron, he'll keep grinding away, and eventually he's going to do damage. Appreciate it. You bet. That homer by Judge didn't just change the scoreboard; it changed the mood in the Yankee <laughs> dugout. That's obvious. You got your superstar struggling. As a team they're struggling to score runs a team that wins 99 games could have been on the verge of going down 2 one and on the brink of defeat to a division winner with a much lesser record which is happening during this postseason tournament the Phillies were 14 games behind the Braves in the National League East and the Braves the defending world champions are done. The Padres 22 games behind the Dodgers in the National League West and losers of 14 of 19 I think it was during the regular season head to head now up two games to one so the Dodgers are on the brink after winning 111. And the Guardians are trying to do it here. Here is something you don't often hear rain delay in San Diego we're told. Game four pending between the Padres and the Dodgers. But wait a second. Game time is about 45 minutes away. So they're not really delayed yet. They're just anticipating that they might be. <laughs> to be precise, the 2 2 to Gonzalez is off the outside corner, full count. Got him looking. Back to back strikeouts in the third for Severino. Four for the game. Caught guessing for something else here by Gonzalez. Fastball right in the heart of the plate. Down on the thighs, but taken by Gonzalez. Now Andres Jimenez with two out and nobody on hit hard but right at Torres plenty of time throws him out and Severino after struggling through the first two frames works a one two three third. Some of the images through the first three and a half innings tonight at Progressive Field. Well, it was only a two pointer by Judge, not a three pointer like he was posing for, but you get the idea. It looked like a three pointer to me. If they gave extra credit for distance, like they do in the NBA, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it would count for extra. Giancarlo Stanton fly to right his first time a check swing didn't mean to do it and he's retired 
between innings. Terry Francona with Lauren Shahadi. Terry, deep counts, base running. What was the plan in attacking Severino? We've had really good at bats. I mean, we we've hit a couple balls, three balls, you know, the other two the other way that almost went out. Hosey got his on the end a little bit, but we've had, like you said, deep counts. We've made him work for everything. I wish we had more to show for it, but our at bats are still good. You were looking for late life from Tristan. What do you see so far? Yeah, I, I think he's actually been good. He just he threw a fastball that Judge got to, and I can probably pick that one up on the way home. Terry, thank you. <laughs> All right. How great is Terry Francona? <laughs> 22 seasons as a big league manager, starting at age 37 with the Phillies way back when. Long stint with the Red Sox, two world championships, and then a lot of success here in Cleveland. A ball and a strike to Josh Donaldson. Struck out his first time. You know, we told you earlier in the series about the similarities between Aaron Boone and Terry Francona, each from a baseball family. Francona's dad, Tito Francona, very notable or noteworthy big league career, hit 363 in 1959 for the Cleveland Indians. And Aaron Boone's grandfather, father, and brother all played in the big leagues. Called strike three to Josh Donaldson. He struck out twice. Ray Boone, the grandfather, Bob Boone, the dad, Brett Boone, and Aaron Boone, brothers who played in the major leagues. And there's another connection. The highlight of Aaron Boone's playing career was that extra inning home run in game seven of the 2003 ALCS between the Yankees and the Red Sox off a of Tim Wakefield knuckleball. Likely as a consequence, as Kiner Falefa steps in, Grady Little lost his job as manager of the Red Sox. Maybe in part because he left Pedro Martinez yeah. in the game too long. Who did they replace him with? Terry Francona, who won a World Series and broke an 86-year hex for the Red Sox the very next year. So, indirectly, Terry Francona perhaps has Aaron Boone to thank for this. Mackenzie's 1-1 pitch to IKF. A chopper, Ramirez charges it, flips it to first, and that's that. Yanks go down in order in the fourth to the bottom half of the inning and what is still a 2-2 game. Predict which players will stack the most total bases each day during the postseason and compete to win $50,000. Enter MLB Base Chase in the MLB Play app or through MLB.com slash play. Restrictions apply. See official rules for details. Bottom of the order and the bottom of the fourth for Cleveland. Arias, Hedges, and Straw. First pitch swinging. Fly ball to right. Judge not quite to the track to make the catch. So Arias is retired. A while ago, we speculated that it would be an upset if Severino could get through five innings. Now, as he's about to throw his 70th pitch, that, does, that seems like a distinct possibility. Yeah, he has settled down, certainly. You mentioned before, 94 pitches in his last start against Texas. Hedges had a single in the second. Sellout crowd here tonight. In the early days of this ballpark, when it was known as Jacobs Field, they had 455 consecutive sellouts. Everything came together at the right time. 
new ballpark. John Hart had put together a terrific team, signed a lot of guys young before they became free agent eligible or arbitration eligible. They had not just a winning team, but a really compelling team. Albert Bell, the young Manny Ramirez, Jim Tomey, Omar Vizquel, Kenny Lofton, Mike Hargrove, the manager. Went to the World Series twice in the 90s. Consistently in the postseason. 455 consecutive sellouts and coinciding with them really getting good when they went to the World Series in 95. That was the last year for the Browns. Then they moved to Baltimore so they had the town to themselves for a long time before the Browns franchise was reinstated. Browns play here tomorrow against the Patriots and some people will attend both games. Full count to Hedges. I faced those teams in the 90s, especially in 95. I always thought they were the best lineup I had ever faced, one through nine. Sandy Alomar Jr. hit ninth a lot in that lineup. Hedges sends one to right, and Judge is there to take it. Runners at first and second with nobody out. One out there. Throw to second. On to first. The triple play to end it. Unbelievable. And during that run in the 90s, you mentioned Sandy Alomar Jr. These two franchises met in the postseason in 97. And Alomar Jr. home run off Mariano Rivera was a decisive blow. Part of a march to the World Series where the then Indians lost. The seventh game of the series to the Marlins in extra innings so close and yet so far just as they had been two years before against a very good Atlanta Braves team. The next year the Yankees had one of the greatest seasons in baseball history. Won 114 Miles Straw is the batter that makes the seats 0 and 2 and the only team that gave them any trouble in the postseason was Cleveland. They swept the Rangers in the division series. They swept the Padres in the World Series. But the Indians took them to six tough games and had them on the ropes at one point. That's how good that Cleveland team was during that era. The 0 2 pitch. Judge may get his third chance of the inning. Took care of Arias, Hedges, and Straw in order. Things have settled down for Severino and through four, we're tied at two. Even though apparently they're going to be delayed a while because of rain in San Diego eventually game four will be played we anticipate on FS1 and if the Dodgers win tonight they'll take a drive back to L.A. from San Diego and play at nine Eastern time in the decisive fifth game also on FS1. Meanwhile in Seattle they're in the 14th <laughs> and it's still scoreless in game three between the Astros and the Mariners with the Astros looking for the sweep and the Mariners not going away easily. Guardians know all about that. Scoreless extras. Bader the hitter through the middle to his left Rosario. Jimenez came in behind him. Neither one could get it. And it's a leadoff hit for Bader. Yep a week ago in this ballpark 15 innings. Scoreless to the bottom of the 15th until Gonzalez ended it with a home run. Hanging slider there from McKenzie. Took that funny bounce and stayed down on Rosario, and that's why it got under his glove. Again, the Yankees trying to do some damage at the bottom of their order to get to Torres and Judge and Rizzo and Stanton. Higashioka struck out in his first at bat. Almost all teams have to deal with injuries throughout the season. So this is an observation not an excuse. But if you have D.J. LeMayhew if you have Andrew Benintendi not only do you have their bats but others move down. They hit seventh or eighth instead of fifth or sixth or they're not in the lineup at all. It changes everything. There's a ripple effect. The 1 0. Cut on and missed.
Bader, who's speedy, leads away. Popped into foul ground down the right field line. No play. You know, once the trade of Gary Sanchez to Minnesota, it looked like Kyle Higashioka was going to be the number one catcher. Mm -hmm. Came out of spring training, had a big spring training with a lot of home runs, yeah. but went cold once the season started. The trade for Trevino, he caught fire, a lot of big hits. Trevino became kind of the number one catcher. But again, we mentioned Gashioka had a big September. One and two, the count to him with Osvaldo Cabrera on deck. He strikes out for the second time tonight. Fifth strikeout for McKenzie. Little cutter, it looked like by McKenzie. He's been using that a little more than his slider the last couple of innings. Cabrera had a double down the right field line and scored when Judge homered in the third. Hedges off with the mask. Let's see if it stays in. It will not. The smiles that were not in evidence a while ago are back in the Yankee dugout. Cole will get the ball tomorrow night. And Cortez, who could be used out of the bullpen if there's a game five, which would be on Monday back in New York. Quick throw over, and Bader dives back. I'm surprised that the Yankees, when they do get their speedy guys on the bases, will not try to maybe steal a run here down at the bottom of the order. This year, Hedges, only 9 of 56 did he throw out. McKenzie aware of that chases him back once again. Bader stole 17 between the Cardinals and the Yankees this year was caught only three times. A drive to deep right and this ball puts the Yankees in front. Cabrera had a double in his first at bat. He unloads his first postseason home run here in the fifth. And the Yankees get off the mat and jump in front four to two. Well, this is how the Yankees win games. Two two-run home runs now to put him in front. McKenzie, 25 home runs given up during the regular season. Two in tonight's game. McKenzie, as you mentioned, who had a very good year, did give up 25 home runs this year. Cabrera knew it. Maybe that's a bit too much self-assurance from the perspective of the other dugout for a guy who barely had 100 at bats in his rookie year but he knew it he plays with a lot of energy and he caught this one flush 10 rows back for the young Cabrera coming into tonight's game in this series judge 0 for 8 with seven strikeouts Cabrera under the radar relatively speaking because it's not Aaron Judge 0 for 8 with five strikeouts. They each have a two run homer, and Cabrera has a double on top of it. <laughs> Sam Hentges gets up now. He's the lone left hander in the Cleveland pen. Torres lifts a fly ball into left center field. 
And Quan is there to take it. At the beginning of this game, it did not look as if Luis Severino was going to be around long. The Guardians had six hits in the first two innings. They produced only two runs. The Yankees tie it on the judge blast, and they go in front on a two-run shot off the bat of Cabrera. And here is Judge. One and one. In center field, Straw comes loping in. And that's that for the Yankees in the fifth, but not before the two run homer by Cabrera puts them in front, four to two. Ernie, thank you. When this one ends, whenever that is, doubtful that we'll go as long as the Astros and Mariners are in the process of going. But Ernie will be here with Curtis Granderson, Pedro Martinez, Jimmy Rollins. Well, he won't really be here. He'll be here on your TV set. There you go. He'll be there in Atlanta. <laughs> you get the idea. Stephen Kwan takes a slider up in the zone for a strike. Juan has doubled and single. Severino works into the bottom of the fifth with a chance to qualify for the victory now with the Yankees in front 4 2. He's retired the last eight hitters he's faced. Terry Francona said when he first saw Juan in spring training, just raining line drives all over the ballpark, he said, How are we going to keep this kid off this team? He continued to play well. He said, how are we going to keep this kid from starting for this team? And what a year he's had. 298. Six home runs, 19 steals, played a good left field. In some seasons, that would get you the Rookie of the Year award. Julio Rodriguez of the Mariners and Adley Rutschman of the Orioles probably blocked that path. But he has made a very impressive debut. The 2-2 pitch. Called strike three. Juan not happy about it. Nine in a row retired by Severino. Well there's two pitches in that block that Quan thinks that Iosonia missed. The high breaking ball earlier in the count. This fastball was off the plate. <laughs> oh no no no. Rosario has struck out and flight out and we'll check in with Lauren and Bob I was just thinking about how this moment this game is why the Yankees handled Severino with kid gloves all year we remember he was taken out of that no hitter beginning of October he was fiery mad about that and even back in July when the team put him on the 60 day IL for that lat strain when he felt that was way too long because he was healthy Boone and Cashman said look we're leading the East by a lot we need you perfect for October they always had their eye on the big prize Bob Lauren thanks well first 10 hitters tonight for Cleveland six hits last 10 0 for 10. 10 in a row retired Hurt. by Severino.
Remember now at that trade deadline a lot of times you have to make roster moves to fit people. Frankie Montas was brought over from the Oakland A's and was supposed to play a big role for this team in the postseason. Ground ball Rizzo to his right comes up with it Severino covers and the Guardians go down one two three in the bottom of the fifth. Big turnaround for Severino. Well, the Aaron Judge home run got Severino and the Yanks even. Cabrera's homer to deep right put McKenzie and the Guardians behind. Pair of two run shots. McKenzie's evening has ended. Sam Hentges out of the bullpen. We've alluded to that Indians, uh, sorry, Guardians, Tampa Bay Ray 15 inning game. It was Hentges. Who got the win in that game? Pitched to score his 13th, 14th, and 15th inning. This is his first appearance now in the division series, so he hasn't worked in a week. It's not a lot of run in his last 15 and a third, though, in September and October. Anthony Rizzo, first man to face him in the Yankee sixth. The book is closed on McKenzie. Five innings. Four hits, but two of them were two run homers. Four runs, therefore. One walk, five strikeouts, 76 pitches. Rizzo has walked and grounded out. One and two. Well, the big left hander has a four pitch mix. Two different fastballs, four seamer and sinker. Slider and curve. Big arm. Roll to the left side. Where Ramirez is the only fielder but it's right at him. And he throws Rizzo out. Ramirez the third baseman. In what would be. Traditionally the shortstop spot on the shift another thing that will be a thing of the past beginning next year. Now Giancarlo Stanton he's flied out and grounded out. Hit only 211 but he had 31 home runs. Homered in each of the last three regular season games for the Yankees, then had a homer in game two of this series. Aaron Boone said before the postseason starts, Stanton, who doesn't say a lot, addressed the team for 10 minutes about things to expect in the postseason. Boone said that was quite inspirational for his ball club. The 0 2. Apparently, one of the things you can expect in the postseason is a Stanton home run <laughs> as he's connected in nine of his last dozen playoff games. That's a foul ball. When they made the deal that brought Stanton from the Marlins to the Yankees, he was coming off 59 home runs in 2017. Joining forces with Aaron Judge, who set a rookie record at that time with 52. So they were anticipating kind of a a Marison Mantle revisited thing, which didn't quite develop, at least not right away. Called strike three. Stanton's now 0 for three. Well, fastball perfect four seamer by Henches right on the outside corner. And they might be looking for some more than an inning of work from Henches. Try to keep the Yankees off the board. Henches pitching in shirt sleeves on a chilly night. But winds are calm. Temperatures in the low 50s. Very comfortable here really. Donaldson. 
He struck out twice. His numbers at the plate are down. He is still an exceptional third baseman. He bounces it to his opposite number. Ramirez plays the short hop nicely and throws him out. Hentges works a one, two, three, six. Get your game on at MLBShop.com. Authentic on-field caps, tees, hoodies, and more. Get all your postseason gear and wear what the champs wear at the official source, MLBShop.com. Bottom of the sixth. Severino still in there for the Yankees. Josh Naylor with 20 home runs during the regular season. Has an RBI double and a strikeout tonight. He'll be followed by Oscar Gonzalez and Andres Jimenez. About an hour or so ago, what kind of odds would you have gotten that Tristan McKenzie would be out in the sixth and Severino would be still out there in the sixth? Well, it shows uh, that Severino didn't panic. What Aaron Boone talked to Lauren about, that his fastball was there. He just needed to stay away from the high pitch count. Lou Trevino up for the Yankees. He worked yesterday in the Bronx. High pop that will make the seats. Both managers told us despite the fact that they had to rely on their bullpens in a 10 inning game yesterday that just about everybody was available. And that includes if the situation is right. Emmanuel Classe who pitched two and a third to get the victory. Yesterday afternoon. Sometimes it's gamesmanship from the managers because they don't want to let the other team know who's available who's not but mm -hmm. at this time of year it's really hard for a manager to ask you if you're ready can you pitch from the bullpen tonight and let's say no. Yes is usually the answer. Severino's 2 2 pitch to Naylor. Bounced into the shift and from the outfield he's thrown out. This postseason, bet $5, win 200 and free bets if your team wins. Download the app and get in on the action. You know, Ronnie, with the conversation having turned a moment ago to the bullpens, we're reminded that yesterday, baseball lost one of the greatest relievers of all time. Bruce Souter passed away at the age of 69. The first pitcher ever to make the Hall of Fame without ever having started a game. Strictly a reliever. Early master of the split-fingered fastball. Exactly 300 career saves. Our sympathies to his family and to everyone, including us who knew him yes. in the baseball community. What a gentleman. I know after I broke my thumb and I could no longer really throw my breaking ball, I needed a third pitch and asked him about the split finger pitch. And the great thing about that pitch is everyone who throws it is a little different in the way it comes off the fingers. But it became a, a pitch that I couldn't live without, and it's, it's due to Bruce. Severino <laughs> has been much more economical of late than he was in the first two innings. A couple of images I'll never forget about Bruce Souter striking out Gorman Thomas in the seventh game in St. Louis in 1982. 40 years ago to wrap up the World Series for Whitey Herzog's Cardinals and then a couple years later giving up two home runs last ditch home runs to another future Hall of Famer Ryan Sandberg in one of the classic regular season games of all time at Wrigley Field and Gonzalez is dispatched by Severino Seve's sixth strikeout of the night well the first out in this inning was on a changeup to Josh Naylor and here another changeup to get Gonzalez on the check swing out. So incorporating his third pitch 
here into his repertoire in the sixth inning, probably his final one. Jimenez to the plate. He struck out and grounded out. 4 2 Yanks in the bottom of the sixth. That game at Wrigley Field in 84 on the Saturday afternoon NBC game of the week when that really was the game of the week yeah. and national game. Game of the world. Yeah, <laughs> that's what the players used to call it. Signature game of Sandberg's Hall of Fame career. And one of the few regular season games that has a name. Around Chicago, they still call it the Sandberg game. That's right. You know, there's the Pine Tar game with George Brett, and maybe one or two others, but not many. Pitch number 101 from Severino is fouled to the seats by Jimenez. You know, sometimes when you're watching a starting pitcher, you think of the words to describe what they're doing, whether it's, you know, nasty stuff or overpowering. I think courageous is what the, the word I would use for Severino tonight. Yeah, gutsy in a baseball sense. And the one two. Hit sharply. Backhanded by IKF. He fires to Rizzo. Does he make the scoop? No. Pulled him off the bag. He came up with the ball, but apparently, at least according to Will Little, did not hold the bag. And now Boone wants to wait to see if they'd like to challenge this. Nope. Go ahead. We'll let it ride. Well, a couple of things at work here. Kiner Falefa gets to it, but see how he takes that extra beat before he throws. And it's not an accurate throw. It bounces into Anthony Rizzo, and that's why the speedy Jimenez is safe at first base. The arm strength of Kiner Falefa from those deep hole is not as strong as some other shortstops, and that's why Jimenez is safe at first. So I was wrong. He held the bag. Yeah. He made the scoop, but Jimenez simply beat it. That's right. That's what they were checking for. He was safe. And it's ruled, obviously, it's a hit. So here's Arias. Arias has had two good at bats. The double down the left field line and first pitch hitting, hit a long drive to right field. Maybe he's the hero tonight for Cleveland. The official capacity here is just under 35,000. The announced crowd is 36,483. So there's standing room and people are sitting on somebody's lap or something. But it's a packed house. Did you check the back of our booth? <laughs> we do have a spacious <laughs> booth here. It's very nice. Fairly certain this is the final frame for Severino as his pitch count climbs over 100. Well, he's at a place that he hasn't been all season long. Fouled away. He'll have to throw at least one more. 0 and 2. Almost like a fighter who gets knocked down early. You think it's going to be over pretty soon. He gets up off the deck and maybe wins the decision. Well, he's ahead on points right now. Yep. We checked the judges' cards, and he is, in fact, ahead. <laughs> the 0 2 pitch is slapped through the right side for a base hit. Jimenez was running, he takes third easily. Few seam heads in attendance approve. We well, tried to go with the fastball away. It's up just enough. Nice hitting by Arias, uh, going in that hole at second base against the defense. Jimenez running. That makes it easy for him to go first to third. And another two-out hit for the Cleveland offense. Well it looked as if Severino was going to make it through six but then two out singles by Jimenez and Arias finishes night.
He threw 106 pitches. Leaves on the long end of a 4 2 score, but obviously, two base runners are his responsibility. And how about Arias? 47 big league at bats coming into this, his first playoff game. Two for three with a single and a double. Coming back to Progressive Field after this. By authority of the Office of the Commissioner of Baseball, and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form, and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without express written consent. Again, another courageous effort using that word for Severino tonight. Things did not always go so well. Five full counts, seven counts where he went at least six pitches, uh, but he got better as the game went along. Using all of his pitches, change ups in the sixth inning to record a couple of outs, but two base hits now have put the Yankees in a little trouble. So they go to Lou Trevino. Appeared in yesterday's game at Yankee Stadium, started the sixth inning, faced three batters, struck out Owen Miller, walked Jimenez, who stole second, struck out Austin Hedges, and then they went to the pen for Loisaga. Speaking of Austin Hedges, he was the hitter who was due. But as soon as Trevino came in, Francona summons Will Brennan off the bench. Brennan had fewer than 100 at bats, but as you see, he hit 357. So he comes up in a spot with runners at first and third, and two out in the sixth in a two run game. Down and in ball one. Only the Guardians would start a rookie at first base who had no postseason at bats. He gets a second hit of the day. In a big spot, another rookie comes up in Brennan to try to get a big hit. They not only have young players, they use them. Without hesitation, <laughs> right. apparently. One one pitch coming to Brennan. Line drive by Rizzo. It's an RBI hit. Jimenez scores. And Arias is on his way to third. Pinch hit RBI single by Will Brennan. It's a four to three game. Interesting choice of pitches there by Trevino. Threw a fastball right by him. Had a half of a swing very late. Comes back with the changeup down. And Brennan catches up to it and hits it in that hole. Really just sped up his bat with that off speed pitch. You think about this inning and how it typifies at least an aspect of the Guardian season. Okay, Jimenez started the All-Star game. Severino hoping Trevino can hold on to what is now a one-run lead. But now you have guys like Arias and Brennan contributing in this inning. And they have had so little experience this season, they'll still qualify as rookies next season. Don't have enough at-bats to lose rookie status. And here they are in October. Miles Straw is the hitter. He's 0 for 2. Two out, two on, and a run home in the sixth. As he did yesterday, apparently Loisaga will follow Trevino. Asking a lot of Loisaga. Maybe these young players for the Guardians are too young to know how big these moments are.
Down and away, two and one. Line drive caught by Torres. Hit it hard, but Torres is able to backhand it. The Guardians score one, they leave two, and after six, New York four, Cleveland three. In the bottom of the six, Will Brennan pinch hit for Austin Hedges and delivered an RBI single. So now Luke Maley is the new catcher as we move to the seventh. Isaiah Kiner Falefa leads it off for the Yankees. Sam Hedges remains in the game Hard. for the Guardians. And his curveball drops in there for strike one. Meanwhile, in Seattle, they go to the top of the 17th. The Astros and the Mariners still scoreless. And again, for casual fans, keep in mind, the ghost runner at second base does not exist in the postseason, which is what makes the possibility of these marathon games not likely, but perhaps a greater possibility than when you're putting a guy on second base to start every extra inning. I played in a game that was 16 innings in Houston against those Astros. Greatest game I ever was a part of. With a lot more at stake. <laughs> game six of the LCS in 86. Sent you guys to the World Series. The one two pitch. Is up high. Kind of for left is 0 for 2. Roll to Ramirez, sure-handed as always, throws him out. Ramirez started his career as a second baseman. Now he's a corner infielder. Very good fielder, one of the most productive hitters in the game, a leader in the clubhouse and on the field. And perennially is among the top five or six in the MVP voting. Never quite makes it to the top because somebody or other has an even greater year. But in terms of consistency, he's right there. Probably be in the top five again this year. Top two has to be Judge and Otani. Yeah. And I think it'll be in that order. We'll I do see. too. Bader's one for two, had a single his last time up. You know, that debate lands partly in how you define most valuable player, which most people see as different than player of the year. Otani doing what he's doing, a true unicorn. Yes. He could be the player of the year every year. But hard to argue that during the regular season, and it's just a regular season award, that anyone was more valuable to his team than Aaron Judge among everyday players. The 2 1 pitch to Bader is a high drive to deep left field. This ball is on its way. This ball is gone. Second home run of this series for Harrison Bader. And the Yankees reestablish a two run lead. They led the majors with 254 home runs. They scored more than half of their total runs on homers. Every run in this game on a home run. Yeah. 
Well, it goes back, Bob, to what a lot of people think when they get to the postseason, that the postseason is going to be dominated by pitching, but it's dominated by home runs. And teams that out-homer the opposition invariably win most of the time. That's the first run the Cleveland bullpen has given up in this postseason. They have been brilliant. But Bader connected here. Missed with a couple of curveballs, had to come in with the fastball, and Bader didn't miss it. Prodigious shot to left field. Now Higashioka, who struck out twice. Harp! A ball and a strike to him. So again, it took three hits to get a run for the Guardians in the previous half inning, and one swing for the Yankees to get the extra run on the board. In six innings in this game so far, the Guardians have gone out in order half of the time. Three, one, two, three innings. They've had three other innings where they scored one run on three hits and left two. And with three swings of the bat, the Yankees have produced five runs. Two run homers by Judge and Cabrera and a solo shot here by Bader. De Los Santos gets up. So if you're the Guardians, you have to feel, boy, you've taken some good at bats, but you should have more on the board. Every run the Yankees have scored in this series, except for one which came across on a sacrifice fly, every other run on a homer. Bader had a solo shot in game one. Higashioka thought he had a walk. Instead, the count is full here. Bader a solo shot. Rizzo a two-run shot. Trevino's sacrifice fly brought home another run. They scored only two runs yesterday, but on a two-run homer by Stanton. And all five runs today, or tonight, on homers by Judge, Cabrera, and Bader. Foul back. So 11 runs in this series for the Yankees 10 as a result of home runs by the home run. That's what they do. True to form. Just had to wait so long to get production from Harrison Bader but now that he's here. Providing it in the postseason. Higashioka stays alive. Bader is a good player. He's a superior outfielder. Mm -hmm. Covers all kinds of ground in center field. He can run the bases. He's a stolen base threat. And when he's healthy and in a groove, he's a productive hitter. That was a good acquisition. Jordan Montgomery was very good in his first several starts for the Cardinals. But in the long run, this is a good deal for the, for the Yankees. Another 3-2 pitch. And Agashioka's on his way to first. Well, Bader knew he had it right away. The flip of the bat. Point to his teammates. Let's go, Cabrera says. And that ball was hit 110 miles an hour by Bader. He's never hit a ball harder for a home run. Speaking of homers, it's Cabrera's turn to hit. He has doubled and homered in this game. Carl Willis, the pitching coach, conferring with Henches. We spent a lot of time talking about all the lineup changes with Torres leading off and pushing Judge back down to second. But it's Cabrera, who batted fifth and sixth in the first couple of games, pushed down to ninth and now produces. Cabrera is a switch hitter, turns around to bat right handed against Henches. Shows bunt, pulls back, called strike. Glance down at the third base coach, Luis Rojas. Oh. 
Cabrera. Strike two. Aaron Boone told us that Cabrera stronger from the left side holds his own from the right side. Henches brings home the 0-2 pitch and Cabrera is finished on three pitches. And now Francona goes to the mound. So he's going to go to De Los Santos to face Torres. Aniel De Los Santos coming in. He was 5 and 0 this year with an ERA of just over 3. And he'll have the ball when we come back to Progressive Field. Made easy, go to Geico.com. There's a thumbnail on what's happened to this point. Aniel De Los Santos from San Pedro de Macorís in the Dominican Republic, 26 years old, his fourth big league season. Well, he was a top pitching prospect as a starter in the Phillies organization, signed by this Cleveland ball club this past winter and put in the bullpen. Worked a scoreless seventh in game one at Yankee Stadium on Tuesday night. Mostly fastball slider mix. Here's the situation he inherits. Higashioka at first with two out. And Glaber Torres at the plate. He's 0 for 3, but in his second at bat, he lined out to deep center. Up and in ball one. Two outs. Torres looking. Any way to get on base here, base hit, walk, to get Judge to the plate. Hard. One and one. Started him with the fastball, then came back with the slider. Another slider, swing and a miss. Well, that three quarter action that he has, De Los Santos throws a little across his body, makes it awfully difficult to the right handed hitters. Feels like that breaking ball is coming right out of your hip. They tell us the temperature has dropped from 54 degrees at game time down to 48 now. But it doesn't feel all that chilly because the winds are calm. The one two. Fouled away. Torres lifts a pop into shallow center field. Straw comes in. And that's that in the seventh. But not before the home run from Bader. Puts the Yankees back up by two. It's 5-3 as they stretch at progressive field with the top of the order coming up for the Guardians in the bottom of the seventh.
fans settling back into their seats after the seventh inning stretch. Their Guardians come up. Trailing this one by a score of five to three as we go inside the booth presented by Toyota. Well, Ron, the stats don't lie. Over the last two postseasons, the team that has out homered its opposition is 35 and six. The Yankees have three home runs tonight, and they lead it five to three. You know, Bob, thinking about it, coming into this series, the Yankees had hit twice as many home runs as the Cleveland Guardians. So that's how they were going to win ball games. And a long, prodigious shot from Judge Cabrera in the ninth hole comes up with a big two-run shot, and Bader. Hit a homer harder than he's ever hit a homer in his career. And now he has two in this series alone. No one's going to deny how important it is to be able to hit the ball out of the park. But I'll still say this, especially in the postseason, facing, generally speaking, the best possible pitching, you need to be able on occasion to yeah. play small ball. They're in a nothing nothing game in what now, the 16th or 17th inning, maybe the 17th in Seattle. Lay down a bunt, steal a base, move a base runner. Still comes in handy. Jonathan Lewisaga out of the bullpen. He has pitched in both of game one and game two. Now here in game three, 27 pitches over the first two games. Juan shows bunt, pulls back, takes a strike. He's doubled, singled, struck out against Severino. Wiseguy has a sinking running fastball to go with a curve and an excellent changeup he uses against both left handed hitters and righties. Wandy Peralta in the Yankee pen. Boone thinking ahead to Ramirez and Naylor. Ramirez a switch hitter, but generally more productive batting left handed. One and two to Quan. Down and in two and two. I have to remind myself of the three batter rule. So Loisaga has to face at least three hitters. So he would have to face Ramirez. The earliest that he could call upon Peralta would be for Naylor, who was due up fourth in this inning. And struggles against left handed pitching. You're right. You have to either face three or conclude an inning. You can face fewer than three if you conclude an inning. And the 2 2 pitch. Fouled away. Jonathan Lewisaga, who's been a workhorse out of the Yankee bullpen, is 27 years old. He's from Managua, Nicaragua. The 2 2 to Quan is lifted into shallow left field. Cabrera comes in. He's under it and takes it. Runners at first and second with nobody out. One out there. Throw to second. On to first. The triple play to end it. Unbelievable. Now Rosario with one out and nobody on he's 0 for 3. Huh. Slider for a strike up in the zone. We're told that Jeremy Pena just homered for the Astros. 
what a series he has had Mariners for the Astros. Having, Mariners obviously have another turn at bat left. Oh, and two to Rosario. The Weisiger is the kind of reliever you can call upon if you bring him in late in a game for a multi inning save or a multi out save, four or five outs. Could even start a game in a pinch. Well, he strikes Rosario out on three pitches. Brings up Ramirez, but with nobody out, with nobody on rather, and two out. Two excellent breaking balls from Loisaga, both in perfect spots to retire Rosario. Ramirez has singled, flied to deep right, and then retired on a good play by Rizzo at first base. Not a true shift. There are two infielders on either side of second base, but Torres is very mm -hmm. deep at second, as is Rizzo at first. Even this defensive alignment will not be allowed starting next season okay. because not only must you have two infielders on either side of second base, they must have their cleats on the dirt. Mm. So Torres would have to move in a few steps. The only vulnerability for Torres in this is if the ball is not hit sharply to him because of the speed of Ramirez. Running in place. Some calisthenics. The 1 1 pitch. Change up that time. You know, we're in an era where a change up can be plus 90. And that one was. He's got the full arsenal. His 1 2 pitch to Ramirez. Is wide for ball two. Some relievers offer just two, maybe three pitches. Not many have as wide a repertoire as Eliza, who's already shown us curveball, slider, fastball, changeup. And this is first half inning. And his 2 2 pitch. And that's why he's equally effective a crossover guy can get right handers and left handers out effectively. The ball was pulled right into the dugout opening for the Yankees heads up. Pulled so much he almost hit it behind himself. <laughs> A little roller charging as Donaldson throws on the run. Not in time. There's the speed of Ramirez that you were mentioning. One second. I might take a look at that. They may want to check. Nope. They're convinced it's not worth a challenge. Talk about a five tool player. And the way he can play the hustle that we saw in game two which was the difference and again the hustle here for his second base hit. Everything done right by Donaldson Rizzo with the stretch and still. Can't get Ramirez at first base. So Jose is now two for four tonight. And five for twelve in the series. And now. Peralta will come in to face Naylor.
It'll take a while for him to get to the mound. Allowing us to dispense with these commercial responsibilities. <laughs> In this series, all three games, it has been initially to face this guy. Well, that's Peralta himself, but soon enough we'll see this guy, Josh Naylor, the guy he'll be facing. You know, there used to be a time when left handed relievers would come in to just face one hitter. But what you have here with Wandy Peralta is you, his lane is to face Naylor at all costs late in the game. Peralta, one of the few pitchers, predominantly 42% changeups, 37% sinker ball. He should catch a few breaking balls with Naylor at the plate. Well, Naylor represents the tying run. He had 20 home runs this year. He has an RBI single and three at bats tonight. Oscar Gonzalez on deck if he passes the baton. Ball one. Easy toss over and Ramirez is back easily. There's Josh Naylor's younger brother Bo Naylor. Who's on the roster as a third catcher because they so frequently pinch hit. For one of their catchers as they have done already tonight. So just in case you need that insurance. Two good takes there from Naylor. And now the count leverage shifts to him. Sitting on a 2 0 pitch. Gonzalez, a right handed hitter with power, waits on deck. Bat is splintered and the count goes to two and one. That'll be used for kindling and <laughs> Naylor has a new bat. I mean just right off the end of the bat. And the kindling went flying. Peralta another who deems a sweatshirt unnecessary no long sleeves even as the temperature dips into the 40s his 2 1 pitch to Naylor is nubbed foul so he took the first two pitches off the strike zone got to the 2 and 0 count now two swings at balls that he's fouled off right off the end of the bat. Did he go? Yes, he did. And the inning is over. Ramirez is stranded at first. Peralta comes in and does what Boone asked him to do. He takes care of Naylor. We played seven. And the Yankees lead it five to three.
Aaron Judge's homer earlier in this game gives him a dozen in the postseason for the Yankees. He's never made it to the World Series to this point in his career, taking nothing away from Bernie Williams and Derek Jeter. Multiple layers of playoffs during their careers. All of Mantle and Ruth's home runs were in the World Series and the World Series only. Here is Judge. Taking ball one from De Los Santos. He struck out, then unloaded a very long home run. After which he flied to center. Ooh, that one was right in the middle of the plate. A fat slider, and Judge couldn't pull the trigger. Well, he was able to pull the trigger for six months uh, during the summer. And in the third, he pulled the trigger and hit one 449 feet. The 1 1 pitch. He lifts it to left. Does it have the distance? Back goes Quan to the wall, and he's got it. Watch the swing here, up and in. Watch his face. He knew he didn't get it as soon as he hit it. Just got in on him enough. Judge's swing is back. You know what else was back mm -hmm. in Cleveland a week ago, but apparently staying away for the baseball? Last Sunday, the Browns are playing the Chargers. And the midges were back. <laughs> the midges. They hatch along the banks of Lake Erie. Apparently once a year. It, they don't bite, but they're very annoying. And the reason I bring it up is that in 2007, in the division series, the Yankees against the then Indians, Jabba Chamberlain on the mound, one nothing lead in the eighth inning of game four. And here come the midges. And Joe Torre to this day says one of his biggest regrets is that he didn't pull the Yankees off the field. Rizzo takes a ball, a ball and a strike. Here's the midges. Here's Chamberlain. <laughs> and he was somewhat unnerved. He issued a walk, threw a couple of wild pitches. They came out and sprayed him with insect repellent. Joe Torre says, do you want to keep going? Jeter and company <laughs> trying to fan them away with their <laughs> caps. A bizarre scene. <laughs> Yankees wound up losing the game in extra innings. Cleveland moved on. In fact, in the next round of the LCS, they led the Red Sox three games to one, and that slipped away, and the Red Sox then went on and beat Colorado, swept them in the World Series. Rizzo asked for time. Check on the Cleveland pen. That's Eli Morgan. Rizzo's 0 for 2 with a walk. Two and two. John Carlos Stanton on deck. Well, it's over in Seattle. It took 18 innings. The Jeremy Pena homer decides it. Houston wins 1 0. They sweep the Mariners. But two of the three games were very close and could have gone Seattle's way. With so many layers of playoffs, it makes a difference how quickly you can finish off an opponent <laughs> before moving on to the next round. So the Astros get a sweep. 
Verlander will be rested and ready to start game one against one of these two teams. Mm. This has to go at least four. Garrett Cole has to start tomorrow night. So if in fact the Yankees advance they can't use him in the first couple of games in Houston. And we welcome those of you who are watching that 18 inning marathon and now watching Anthony Rizzo strike out for the second out in the Yankee eighth at Progressive Field. Bob Costas along with Ron Darling and Lauren Shahadi. We have been calling the game from the outset over on TNT. Now we have merged the networks. The Yankees have gotten two run homers from Aaron Judge, from Oswaldo Cabrera, and a solo from Harrison Bader, and they lead it 5 to 3. The series is tied at a game apiece. Giancarlo Stanton is 0 for 3. The 1 0 pitch taken for a strike. The first two innings of this game, the Guardians had six hits, scored one run in each of the innings, left two. Later in the game, same thing. They've had three innings with a total of nine hits and three runs. One run in each of those innings, two runners left on base. The Yankees matched that and then exceeded it with three home runs. Chase that one way out of the zone, one and two. And the result double up on the hits from the Guardians over the Yankees, but the Yankees' hits have been prodigious. Luis Severino right now stands to be the winner. Tristan McKenzie, the loser. Stanton chops one to short. Rosario has it. And he throws Giancarlo out. The Yankees go in order in the eighth. Six outs left to the Guardians, who trail it by two. Back to progressive field after this. Aaron Judge, who had been slumping to put it mildly, hit a 449-foot home run that tied the game. Osvaldo Cabrera, the rookie, Hit a home run of his own that put the Yankees in front. Harrison Bader had one that extended their lead. Luis Severino struggled early, but hung around long enough to qualify for the win. And now it's Wandy Peralta on the mound. He finished the seventh by striking out Josh Naylor. And he works into the eighth, facing Oscar Gonzalez, who's 0 for 3, struck out twice. We know that Garrett Cole pitches tomorrow night in game four for the Yankees. We could guess that Cal Quantrill, who opposed him in game one at Yankee Stadium and would be similarly rested, as Gonzalez pops one into shallow center field. Bader comes racing in. Judge is also there, and Judge cuts in front of him to make the catch. So it could be Quantrill. They haven't used Savali, who's their fourth starter, perhaps. Right now we'll call it Quantrill and this is what each of them did in game one. Yeah Savali not really stretched up uh, so it would be more of a, a bullpen game if Savali started it that's why you think that they'll go to Quantrill. So game five if they get there becomes a bullpen yes. game for them. Maybe for both teams. Yeah. Jimenez looks to drag a bunt and comes up empty. He's one for three, had an infield single his last time. Yeah. Oh, and two. Walter's well, got that good change up that he'll throw to righties and lefties. That change up lefty on lefty is a pitch that most left handed hitters don't see. Think about the advantage now for the Astros and perhaps Brian Anderson and company mentioned that to the portion of the audience that was following that game and joins us late. 
the LCS will start on Wednesday in Houston against one or the other of these teams. A pop on the infield Donaldson is there and he squeezes it. That's the second out. Get back to my point in a moment. Enjoy the thrill of the postseason with the MLB app. Get daily lineups, live pitch by pitch coverage, and more on our free app with over 150,000 reviews. Download the MLB app today. So, if it goes as far as five, no matter which team emerges, they won't be in a position to throw their normal one two. That's right. Whereas the Astros, by virtue of having swept and they had a day off in between, and now three days to await the winner of this series. They'll be set up. And they'll be at home of course because they had the best record in the American League. For example. Garrett Cole if the Yankees were advanced he would not pitch until game three. Yep. And because there is no off day now in the LCS between games five and six only one off day between games two and three for travel. Hurt. If he was to pitch if there was a seventh game and if Garrett Cole was to pitch it. Unless there was rain or something that got in the way and that wouldn't actually be a factor in Houston because they have a retractable right. roof so scratch that he'd have to do it on three days rest. Which back in the day was normal but is anything but normal today. That's right. The rookie Gabriel Arias is two for three in his first ever playoff game. You got a brief look at Nestor Cortez and he was the game two starter. Boone has told us if this does in fact go to a fifth game on Monday at Yankee Stadium Cortez could be good for a couple of innings. Swung on and missed. Peralta works a perfect eighth. He's retired all four hitters he's faced. We go to the ninth with the Yankees up 5 3. to the ninth in game three of this ALDS Yankees looking to go up two games to one and leading five to three Eli Morgan comes out of the bullpen well, they converted him to relief from last season when all of his 18 appearances came as a starter in 2021 now in the bullpen Josh Donaldson starts it against him 0 for three pair of strikeouts on the ground out down by two and Morgan trying to keep it that way. The problem here for the Guardians is they've got the bottom of the order. They've got Luke Maley the catcher who doesn't hit for much of an average. Miles Straw who hit 221 this year then back to the top for Quan. They got to get somebody on base and they got to get Rosario and Ramirez to the plate Hard. and they don't exactly have the right guys to do it with the possible exception of Quan. It'll be interesting to see who the Yankees lose are uh, used to pitch a ninth inning. Well they'll probably hit for Maley. Will Benson is another left handed bat on their bench. And they'd have to use if the game is extended they'd have to use their third catcher Bo Naylor. Donaldson lifts one into left center field. Straw gets under it. Oh, I'm supposed to read this. 
I thought it was going to be some sort of recorded thing. Here you go, folks. Get an inside look at the latest season of Impractical Jokers with new facts, new trivia, and new insights on celebrity guests. Catch all new episodes of Impractical Jokers Inside Jokes Thursday at 10 p.m. on True TV featuring these two guys. <laughs> that j joke was on you. Yeah. On that one. Sort of. <laughs> or on the seam heads out there. Isaiah kiner Falefa. A little bloop into foul territory, and it drops untouched. Harrison Bader, who's two for three, including a home run, is on deck. It looks like the Yankees are going to ask Wandy Peralta to finish this game. To face at least seven hitters. He's retired the first four. Hard. Well, we spent so much time talking about the Yankees' lack of depth in their lineup with Mayhew out, Benintendi out, but they don't have that depth in their bullpen as well. Well, with Peralta being effective. And the big guns at least a few hitters away when it comes to the Guardians lineup. Called strike three and Connor Falefa sits down. He'd like to save some of his other guys for tomorrow night if needed. Fastball change up mix from Morgan. This one right on the corner at 94 miles an hour with the four seamer. You know, Michael King was a big injury for that bullpen. Huge. Aroldis Chapman, ineffective. And then he went AWOL. <laughs> yeah. Zach Britton tried to come back early off Tommy John surgery, couldn't quite do it. King and Clay Holmes were just about untouchable mm. until King went out with an elbow problem. He'll face Tommy John surgery. Holmes. Had a shoulder problem. He's back now, but not as effective in the second half of the season as the first. And it appears they can get through this game without calling upon Holmes, so he would be fresher tomorrow if they need him. The pitcher they got from the Cubs, Scott Efros, out, Tommy John surgery. So those are all the injuries to some talented arms. A ball and a strike to Bader. And that one misses for ball two. Morgan gets them through this top of the ninth even if they lose the game Francona has navigated this game without using Trevor Steffen who has been effective without using Karen who had a bout of wildness in game yes. two and without using most importantly Emmanuel Classe. Bader sends a fly ball into shallow left center field straw comes on and tucks it away. So Morgan sets them down one two three and sets the stage for the bottom of the ninth Peralta will come out and try and protect a two run lead. OK three outs left to the Guardians. We were speculating in the last half inning about the possibility of Will Benson pinch inning but that's when we thought that a right hander might come out of the bullpen and it turns out that Aaron Boone is going to ask Peralta to work two and a third and retire seven hitters. So Luke Maley, the second catcher at 221 for the year, leads it off. Well, we talked about Severino having a courageous effort. This would be a courageous effort by Peralta. Two times in his career, he's had an outing of two and a third. His career high is three innings pitched. Two quick strikes to Maley. Miles Straw on deck, then Stephen Kwan. If one man can reach Rosario has home run power he's already homered once in this series at Yankee Stadium and Ramirez waits beyond Rosario. A 
A pop into shallow right. Torres out from second base, but Judge comes in, has the easier play, and makes it. By the way, because of the extraordinary game and its extraordinary length in Seattle between the Astros and the Mariners, this game had to be shifted onto TNT. And so our apologies to Will Farrell fans because I'm guessing that the <laughs> TNT switchboard was flooded because Step Brothers was supposed to start at 7.30 and Blades of Glory at 9.30. And all of that washed away, a Will Farrell marathon. <laughs> but folks, it's postseason baseball. And you probably DVR the entire oeuvre of Will Farrell already. And it's available. If there's a blockbuster anywhere left in the United States, it's available. Miles Straw in the air to left. In comes Cabrera, and he won't get there. Kiner Falefa has to pick it up. Straw now, after hesitating, scoots to second, which is important only because it takes the force in the double playoff. Cabrera might have been playing Straw, who hasn't hit a home run all year, a bit too deep. Well, he just didn't get a great jump on this lunging swing from straw and by the time he got on his horse he could not get there we saw the ball drop in at Yankee Stadium in front of him for a double that turned into three bases for Ramirez and now two bases for straw on a ball that falls in front of Cabrera Cabrera is a very good athlete He's just hit off the end of the bat that might have fooled him as you said Ronnie very good athlete he's played four different positions already in his rookie stint with the Yankees, but he is not an experienced outfielder. Quan has doubled, singled, struck out, flight out. Six home runs regular season. Home run off Garrett Cole earlier in this series. Tying run at the plate. Ahmed Rosario on deck. Clark Schmidt up in the bullpen. Ramirez waiting if one more man can reach for the Guardians. In there for strike one. Quan has been their hottest hitter in this series so far. That looks like a base hit. It drops in front of Cabrera. Guardians have something going now in the ninth. Neither ball hit hard. But the outcome, runners at first and third with one out. Well, this is what Quan has done all season long. Has the ability to just serve that ball to left field. Almost a half of a swing as he hits that ball to left for a base hit. He's now 3 for 5 tonight and 6 for 14 in the series. Can't really blame Peralta. A couple of soft hits. Now the ball to left field has got to be an out. You know that ball by the way was scored a single but no error. Somehow he wound up at second base but that's not accounted for. Huh. Official score says single no error but he wound up at second base. Schmidt winds up in the game and Rosario will face him when we come back. One out and Rosario and Ramirez will have a shot at it. Yesterday at Yankee Stadium. I think we're about to see this up. Here it is. Against Peralta. No Cortez. I'm sorry. Cortez into the bullpen. Long home run for Rosario. During the regular season. He had 11. Well this is what you knew that Aaron Boone was going to have to do with this bullpen. is kind of piece it together. And with Clark Schmidt who was a starter at University of South Carolina throughout the minor leagues has been their multi inning reliever out of that bullpen. Now he's asked to get two outs.
Pitched in game two yesterday. Came in top of the tenth to relieve Jamison Tyone. Faced three batters. Got them all to ground out. Needed just nine pitches. Ball one. Schmidt had two saves this year, but they were the three inning variety at the end of games, not to mm -hmm. get the big two outs at the end of the game. Foul back. Good swing. So the end result is Schmidt is a guy who has a five pitch mix. Maybe nothing overpowering, but he's got to use all those five pitches to get his outs. Like a starter. Yes, exactly. Five pitch mix like a starter. Working out of the bullpen here in a clutch situation. There's a base hit. The tying run moves into scoring position. Straw, meanwhile, comes across to make it five to four. And here comes Ramirez. Tried to come in with a two seam fastball, never got there. Rosario with the quick bat finds a hole between Connor Falefa and Donaldson for a huge base hit for the Guardians. Well, this Guardians offense feels like they scratch to get one run here and there. But the way they score a big inning is if they get runners on base in front of Ramirez. That's the situation here. Jose has a pair of singles and four trips. He's five for 12 in the series. Tons of speed on the bases. Juan at second. Rosario at first. The potential tying and winning runs. Schmidt to Ramirez. Ball one. Josh Naylor is on deck. Left handed hitting DH. A little bloop on the infield, but it's going to drop for a base hit. The bases are loaded. Because of the way they had shifted over, what would have been in a normal alignment, an easy catch for the shortstop, is anything but. It drops on the dirt for a base hit that loads the bases. And a good pitch by Smith. The ball that's in on Ramirez jams him. Just a soft little liner to shortstop. Should Put be an out against the shift. It's a base hit. Nice play by Karna Falefa to get it and keep it in front of him. Quan has to stay at third. Hit to the shortstop, but there's no shortstop. Couldn't have thrown it out there better to get yourself a base hit. And again, that fine play by Kiner Falefa. Because the Yankees, even though they had a slump and their lead was trimmed to three and a half, they once led by 15 and a half, because they basically had a comfortable lead in the division all year long, these are the two most important outs to this point that they have faced all year mm -hmm. long. And you would not have thought that Clark Schmidt would be in this situation and asked to get those two outs. Here's Naylor. Tapping it foul. 
One of the reasons Naylor is the DH tonight and didn't play first base. He's compromised in his leg when he was sprinting the first in game two. So felt like he didn't have enough to be able to play out in the field. And if he hits the ball on the ground, gives the Yankees a chance to get out of this inning. Not an exaggerated shift, but a lot of space on the left side. If somehow he can go that way. Between Donaldson and the bag at third and Donaldson and Kiner Falefa. The 0 1 pitch. Big swing and a miss. Two good breaking balls there by Clark Schmidt with the heat on. Oscar Gonzalez, rookie hero earlier in this postseason for the Guardians, waits on deck. Struck him out. Well, Clark Schmidt will remember if he can get one more out, maybe the three best breaking balls he threw in a row, maybe in his career. Certainly the biggest in his Ooh, career. Nasty pitch to Naylor. Tied him up inside. Nothing he could do with that pitch. Clark Schmidt, 26 year old out of the University of South Carolina. Against Oscar Gonzalez, rookie from the Dominican Republic. He's 0 for 4 with two strikeouts. Schmidt going primarily with. Spinners is breaking ball here. Juan who could tie it. Rosario with the run that could win it. Ramirez away from first. Foul back. So this is Gonzalez a week ago off Corey Kluber of the Rays in the bottom of the 15th snapping a scoreless tie and sending them from the wild card round to the division series didn't hit this one nearly as hard on Friday which would be yesterday now that I think of it at Yankee Stadium but a big blue pit in the 10th inning part of the Guardians win now here he is with the bases loaded in a one run game and two outs in the bottom of the ninth and Schmitz one one pitch is fouled to the seats and they're down to their last strike. Two players so far in the postseason have two game winning RBIs Oscar Gonzalez and Jordan Alvarez. From the set and the one two hit up the middle of base hit the tying runner scored here comes Rosario with the winning run and it's pandemonium at progressive field. Make that three game winning RBIs. They strung together five singles in the bottom of the ninth. That's what they did all game. Yeah. The Guardians had 15 hits, 13 of them singles, and a couple of doubles. The Yankees had five hits, three of them homers. But this time, small ball beat power ball. All breaking balls from Schmidt. This one down and away. Good hitting from Gonzalez not a bad pitch from Schmidt went out and drove that ball up the middle 
And once it cleared and got the outfield grass, that's an easy two runs with Rosario on second base. No chance for Bader. What a game. You know, there's an old adage in sports. It's not necessarily who you play. It's when you play them over the course of the year, especially into September. The Yankees were a much better team than the Guardians. But the Guardians were a really good team right now. Well, the Yankees are getting to a point where they're asking people that have never been in that position yep. to get huge outs. And that's a lot to ask. But you really got to go with the Guardians and their ability to come back in this postseason to have to be led. It's appropriate that they're being led by a young right fielder with this young team, 26 years old, that he's getting the big hits. They had 17 rookies make their debut during the season. They have seven rookies on the postseason roster. And one of those rookies, Oscar Gonzalez, already has three game-winning hits for them in this postseason. And the Yankees played eight innings of perfect Yankee baseball. Power, pitching, just couldn't finish it in the ninth. And again, this is just an observation. Yeah. It's not an excuse. Injuries happen to every team, but you talked about the Yankees being in a position where they couldn't really have their A-list relievers out there with the game on the line. Combination of injuries and also the schedule and playing an extra inning game and no days off. And they wound up with less than their very best, at least on paper, when the game was on the line. Let's go downstairs to Lauren. Oscar and his translator, Augie, the wild card. And then this, congratulations. What makes you so good in these moments? <laughs> Creo que el único que me bendice Dios, Dios es el que hace esos momentos que hagan que se hagan realidad y le quiero dar gracias al Señor. Creo que cuando fui a batear siempre le doy gracias al Señor y él me brindó eso. I think I'm just blessed. I just always put this in the hands of God and he just helped me come through in these moments. You step to the plate. What are you trying to do, Oscar? ¿Qué trataste de hacer en ese turno? No, solamente poner la bola en juego, poner el bate a la pelota y que pase lo que pase, lo iba a agradecer al Señor como sea. Just put the ball in play. Whatever happened, I'll just thank God, and thankfully you got the, the results. I saw you watch it for a long time. Did you know it went through? ¿Sabes tú viste la pelota que pasó? ¿Qué fue lo que viste cuando el batazo? No, cuando vi que pasó, solamente esperé que amé anote pa ya va a celebrar gracias a Dios. Just was waiting for the guys to score and then get ready to celebrate. Up to one. How do you finish it? ¿Cómo termina la serie ahora que está dos a uno? ¿Cómo terminamos? ¿A qué hace falta ahora para terminar la serie? No ganar, ganar, brother. Eso es lo único que hay que ganar y Seguir poniendo los fanáticos así divertido. Hey, it's just a matter of keep winning and just doing it for the fans, trying to keep the fun for the fans. Enjoy it, Oscar. Congratulations. That's it. Bob. Lauren, thanks so much. Congratulations to Gonzalez and the Guardians. And now, tomorrow night, the Yankees will ask Garrett Cole to save their season and push it to a game five at Yankee Stadium on Monday night. A lot of fans will say, well, Clay Holmes wasn't lights out in the second half of the season the way he was in the first, but he's still, at least nominally, your closer. He's your guy, but he has the tender shoulder only recently back in action, yeah. and they were unwilling to push him and use him tonight. Well, they have the right man in the right place with Garrett Cole. Pitched very well in game one. If he goes up against Cal Quantrill, it's Garrett Cole's game. This is why he was signed as a Yankee to pitch a game to save their season. So the final score, the Guardians six and the Yankees five, and Cleveland takes a 2-1 lead in this best of five series. Coming up next, we'll send it to Atlanta for the MLB postseason closer show. I'm sure that Ernie and Curtis and Jimmy and Pedro will have multiple takes on what's transpired around baseball tonight. For Ron Darling, Lauren Shahadi, and the rest of the crew, Bob Costas saying so long from Cleveland. We'll see you back here tomorrow night. For Game 4, you've been watching the postseason on TBS, exclusive home of the American League Championship Series. Good night, everybody. <laughs>